Hi, this is Dr. Robin McAvoy, developmental neuropsychologist and one of the authors of Child Decoded. And I'm here today with Michelle Moore, who is a learning specialist and the clinical director at Ruth Levison and Associates. And they do therapies with speech therapy, language therapy, uh, reading therapy, and other learning supports. They are a clinic that has had to suddenly move a lot of their uh, work to teletherapy to support kids from their homes. And as we know, that has not been easy for everybody as distance learning and school hasn't been easy for everybody. So I thought I'd get in touch with Michelle today to talk about some of the strategies parents can be using to make learning most successful for their kids through teletherapy. Uh, Michelle, I wanted to start actually with the very youngest kids, uh, two-year-olds who would come into therapy. And parents have been told, great, you're getting in early, you know, and this is the best time to be doing your intervention. You'll have the best response if you can start early. And suddenly they have a two-year-old on teletherapy, and I just don't see how that's going to work. What strategies are y'all suggesting in that situation? Yeah, that's a great question. So what we found is obviously our, our goal here is if we can even get them retaining skills, um, we may not see huge, huge progress or huge advances during this time because the goals have shifted a little bit during this time. But those young ones, I feel like parents can do a lot to just prep the kids a little bit before and let them know that we're going to go over to the computer or to the screen and we're going to be talking with, you know, it may be Miss Michelle, we're going to talk to Miss Michelle and she's going to ask you some things. So I think any conversation you can have to prep a kiddo before they sit down and then really know that the parent needs to be that coach. The kiddo needs to be sitting on your lap or you can sit right next to them so that you're able to interact. But it's not going to be a long session. A two-year-old is not going to attend for a long therapy session. So at that point, it may be more consulting with the therapist around some activities and things that can be done. I know when my daughter was in speech therapy and she started very early at around 15 months, because of oral motor apraxia, the therapist had given us a lot of good things to do at home that I could work into the day. Uh, I remember one of the things was trying to wake up her mouth actually at mealtimes doing compressions against the, her upper palate you know, with a washcloth, just trying to build some awareness. Um, is that something that therapists should be asked about parents? What can I do with a two-year-old during the day to build skills. Absolutely. And I feel one of the important pieces is that consult or weekly meeting may look around. Here's what that home therapy program can look like. And then we're going to come back together, you know, for 30 minutes and kind of go through how did that work? What didn't work? A lot of those skills can be honed in so we can change those activities because your therapist should have a lot of tricks that work when they come into the office. We may try something with candy or like you said, a washcloth. We may be trying different things and it may not be working for one kiddo. So rather than just getting a packet of home activities, that consulting and checking in with a the therapist frequently is going to be really helpful for that process. Yeah, I remember my therapist having my daughter putting little bits of food like pudding or something and trying to get her tongue out, uh, uh, mm -hmm. trying to get organize that mouth some. Um, so you have a five-year-old. Uh, what would you expect a five-year-old to, to do with uh, speech or language therapy through teletherapy? So we found that some of our five-year-olds have a little bit, a little bit longer of, of an attention span, but our expectation may be doing a quick five-minute task and working with them doing a game online, and then we're going to have to either shift to another task or we're done at that point. And then at that point, the parent would be hopping on and we'd be kind of finished with some of those home activities. Sometimes it's just for a therapist to be able to listen and hear how those sounds are going, what we can get the kids to show us on a screen so that then we can kind of direct a parent with with what a home therapy program could look like and just having again those calls so that parents can kind of ask what could we be doing those word lists for you know those perfect words for certain sounds we're working on those types of things are definitely things that um, speech therapists can provide for families at home and I think when you get up to six, seven, eight, nine, ten year olds, you're getting to children that you're hoping can sit for um, a longer session, um, maybe even once they're 
eight, nine, 10, 11 years old, parent can even step away. Um, but how are those sorts of sessions going for you guys at your clinic? Uh, those kiddos, you're right, they are able to typically uh, sit for longer, but again, we've got kids with complexities that, you know, have attentional issues, or they're also adding in other therapies online, or they're working with teachers online. So it's a lot of screen time, right, just with sitting down and trying to attend to some of these things. So what we've been trying to do is uh, have kids that have some activities right next to them, a sheet of paper that we can do a game with them. They may have a, a die, a set of die next to them, and we can pull up something where they can roll the die and it feels more interactive. Um, we don't want a ton of movement. I've noticed swivel chairs are not a great idea. Parents, I know that typically is the chair that you have in front of the desk when they're sitting down, but some of those can cause more distraction. But if you can find a place that kind of is quiet, where they have that space to really sit down, and again, that prep time, setting them up, this is what the expectations are when we're sitting down, and a good therapist is gonna change those activities up and is not gonna make them long and laborious so we can get some good practice, and we may have to adjust the, the time based off of that kid. And then the follow-up, the follow-up after, just to make sure that you can practice and follow through with the kids during the week makes all the difference. So that little wrap up time with parents at the end is going to be important to say, this is how I like to prompt. This is the sound we're practicing. I always remember not when my daughter was very little, but when she was a little bit older, trying to get that Y sound in. Yeah. Yeah. And we would start with E. Yeah. And I was like, I never would have thought you'd start that sound that way. And so it's really useful to touch base with those therapists. They can give you really important strategies. Um, I also remember the tongue sandwich for the, the, well, tongue sandwich, get your tongue between your teeth. And so these little quick little prompts you can give during the day because that's really gonna help support kids. Um, so great, so we're thinking for two-year-olds, very little time sitting on mom's lap or two or three-year-old in front of the screen for a few seconds, see if you can get some sounds out of them, see where they stand, and then work with parents on um, strategies and activities they can do during the week to support things. A um, little bit older, a little bit more time, but knowing that really for children under school age, a lot of your work is with parenting support. And then older kids, we're gonna be working that. Um, now say a child has a language disability and autism or severe ADHD, what should parents be trying for? Yeah, and we have found that that can be really difficult when a kid cannot just attend to that screen and give that good eye contact. And so, you know, parents are going to have to, and they're critical, really, parents are stepping up and having to do a lot of these, these practices at home and therapies. And so utilize your experts to really, you almost becoming that assistant in the room that if they need different activities, if something isn't working, don't hesitate to share that with your, your therapist and say, we tried this, this didn't go well because we're always adjusting when we're seeing kids in the clinic and so we really appreciate that feedback so we can give some different activities and ideas there's so much we can send through email now and pdfs and things that families can use and games they can play um, and and support language as well so you know allow us to hear that what's working what's not working so we can adjust because it's a real team approach at this point and it always yeah. is, but even more so now yeah, and we're just reminding parents, because some of our parents are still having to work, they're essential workers, um, there are parents um, who simply, the child is under stress with the loss of their routine, um, parents are under stress with the loss of their routine. Um, if it's not working, you know, what can, can a ther our therapist helping people just stay calm? You know, what can parents do, what can therapists do to say, look, it's gonna be okay? And you know, that's so great because we have had some tears over the last couple of weeks with parents that are just stressed to the max. They are doing full-time jobs and they're doing them on top of trying to be the teacher, be the nurse, be the therapist, and they've gotten so many hats. And so it's okay to take a deep breath and say, this is going to be okay. If we don't get uh, speech therapy in right now there are definitely things we can this is not going to stay like this for forever and so just even if you just need those check-ins with your therapist to see if there are things that are working and if they're not it's going to be for a time period we have many kids that are in the same boat and we're all going to pull this together and we're hoping that you know by the summer we can 
really kind of rev things up and help kids, um, especially the ones that are really needing to have that one-on-one -on -one time with their therapists. Yes, yeah, so we're just going to have to be patient. If I always remind people, if your child was actually sick, you would not be doing therapy. And right now, your child is not sick. You are not. If you're not sick, that's what we're trying to avoid. And so we may just have to miss some therapy. We'll not be getting the gains we were hoping to get. But there's really, sometimes there's just not another alternative. And we have to give ourselves grace, be comfortable with that. And if this can't be done, this can't be done. Do not hold it against yourself or your child or your therapist. This will pass and we will get back to a more normal routine, hopefully within several weeks, but certainly hopefully within a couple of months. Thanks for joining me today. Um, really great input from you. And we'll be getting back with you, um, depending on what other parents are asking about what they need to know. And I think we're going to be doing this for some occupational therapy and sensory therapy consults too. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Michelle. Uh, she's a Ruth Levison and Associates, and they're doing some great work with teletherapy right now. Bye.